Hello and welcome to Gettable, brought to you by Google Pixel. I'm Riley Beveridge. This is Cal Toomey. Cal, we've got so much to get to today from a trade perspective, from a draft perspective, free agency, contract, plenty more. Sammy Lawler, one of the best draft prospects in the country, will be joining us in just a little bit, as will his manager, Dave Trotter from Hemisphere Management Group. Can't wait to get to them. But we've got plenty of news to get through as well. Yeah, we do. And there's a lot of players still up for grabs and still with decisions to make, Riley. And one of the big ones, of course, is Dan Houston. Now, mm. the Dan Domino is one of the big ones left to fall. And I want to have a look at some of the clubs here in the mix for Dan. Because we reported last week that uh, St Kilda was no longer in the race for Dan Houston. Yep. They had met him. They are no longer in the race for him, though. So, uh, Collingwood, Carlton, the Western Bulldogs, who we know have spoken to him and are interested in him, they're still there. And... and trying to get him across the line yeah. and seeing if they can get, do a deal for them. They're in the race. All of those financial offers will be significant. But North Melbourne also I want to throw into this mix more um, real, in a more real way today because we've mentioned a couple of weeks ago that they are willing to use their future first pick yeah. to get this one across the line. Well, I think their financial offer will be significant. Port wants an early pick in this year's draft. So I think this is the scenario where this could open things up for them. I'm watching to see if Fremantle doesn't land Liam Baker and Shea Bolton because if not, the Dockers are open to moving one of their three first-round picks in this year's draft into next year's draft. Right Is there a more appealing option than a North Melbourne future first-round pick? Mm. It's probably still a top-six pick for next year. Of course, the Dockers then would have two picks next year to go on the Chad Warner chase, which is going to be real next year. So could North Melbourne get involved in this Houston chase by sending a first-round pick to Fremantle, who then offer pick nine or pick ten, um, back in, into North Melbourne's hands, then, then can go to Port, Mel Port Adelaide to yep. really uh, lure Dan Houston across because he wants to get back to Victoria. And that's just the starting point. I think mm. a future second rounder would have to be involved in there somehow. Carlton still doesn't want to budge on giving up pick 11 for, to get Houston. I don't understand how else this deal is going to be even yeah. remotely close to being done without pick 11 being a part of it. So I, I don't quite get that, that sort of look at it. Carlton clearly is trying to clear money and mm. they're tied in the salary cap. You've, you've written a report around Jacob Wiedering re-signing yep. soon to 2031. Tom DeConing next year is out of contract mm. the year after. Sam Walsh becomes a free agent. So they need some money to get this uh, appealing uh, option for off, off the ground for Houston. Yeah. And also, if, if you're going to be them, they're going to have to offer a deal. It's going to have to be more than four years. So five years, probably about 800000 So it's a $4 million decision for them. What about the Western Bulldogs and Collingwood? Because as things stand... Neither of them have a first-round pick this year. Collingwood yeah. traded theirs for Lockie Schultz. The Bulldogs will probably get one back in for, for Bailey Smith somehow, but we've said a number of times that could go right down to the wire. Yeah, it can go right down to the wire, but also uh, be right back at the end of the first round, yeah. given Geelong's selection is appearing likely to be around that point. So that's going to be a challenge for them. Mm. Uh, Collingwood, I still think, is going to be in the mix because... Uh, I still think there's a way for them to get pick 12 out of the Suns for John Noble okay. as part of a suite of draft pick selections, not a straight swap. Might just be picked because, up because John Noble. you know, I think uh, the Suns need selections for this year and next year's draft as well. So no doubt Dan Houston's decision to back out of Melbourne has made this pretty complicated. OK, interesting. What about James Peatling and Wade Dirksen? Because there's plenty going on at the Giants at the moment. Yeah, Giants have obviously up their offer to three years for, for James Peatling, but other clubs have come to the party with even longer deals. He has four years there. It yep. could even be a five-year deal for him to get out of there, <laughs> which is amazing. He has six clubs chasing his signature. The Giants, Collingwood, as you reported a couple of weeks ago, mm. Melbourne, St Kilda, the Dogs, West Coast and St um, West Coast as well. And yep. So they are absolutely, yeah, absolutely all over him. That's a third of the competition. He has more options than Netflix. GWS is firmly in the mix to keep him, but he'll be meeting clubs again next week. So his yeah. decision is still a little bit away. Wade Dirksen wants to trade back to Victoria for family reasons. Melbourne's in the box safe for him. Just on Peatling, I think once the Giants raise their offer, the rivals then raise their offer as well. So don't think it's locked in that he stays, but he clearly does want to stay at the Giants. Harry Perryman and Isaac coming two of their biggest free agents on the market. We know Isaac Cumming wants to get back to South Australia. He's got Adelaide and Port Adelaide interested in him. Perryman as well. Didn't inform the Giants at his exit interviews this week that he wanted to move just yet, but he's still got key meetings with senior officials at the Giants later this week. I don't think you're having those meetings unless you're informing them that you are going to leave the football club. Yeah, Collingwood's come hard late for mm. him and, and he's pushing pretty hard for Perryman. Hawthorne has got itself in the mix and Port Adelaide's still 
That's been a four-year chase for Port Adelaide. They were there in 2020 when he's last out of contract. Uh, they're there again. So they are uh, certainly right into this one. And I still think they're in a pretty strong position. And, and the weekend's win helps that. Um, clubs feel he's been torn throughout the year, clearly. Yeah. But he has a lot of options. Jack Lukosius, uh, I expect him to be in South Australia next year as well. Uh, both Adelaide and Port Adelaide are, are courting him. He has two years to run on his deal. Um, still hasn't made a, a final call about where that is and hasn't uh, made the decision that he's absolutely leaving the Suns, but yeah. I think he, he will. Uh, there's at least five years on the table from, from Adelaide, likely Port Adelaide as well. So he's got long-term offers there to go back to, to both clubs. Uh, probably more money as, at, at Adelaide's disposal, I'd say. Yeah given the, the port interest in Perriman and coming as well, and Houston's sort of swaying in the breeze a little bit, but uh, certainly opportunity, and the link with Connor Rosie is so strong there. Port Adelaide's also got Joe Richards potentially still coming to the football club as well, another option for them. Jack Martin, delisted by Carlton last week. And we know Fremantle's had interest throughout the year. That, that extends all the way back to 2023. What about some other clubs? Well, he's, he's had interest himself in going back to Queensland where he's got um, family links, but I don't think that'll happen. And maybe Brisbane late if it, if it let out that way. But being a DFA allows clubs now to get him for nothing. Mm. Uh, Geelong has interest in Martin. There's no doubt about that. So um, Martin... Thinks he has a home set in Victoria. We'll wait and see. Harris Andrews, uh, speaking of uh, Brisbane options, don't don't stress. Surely he's not leaving. Don't stress. We <laughs> reported last week about Charlie Ballard being close to a new deal yep. as a pre-agent before he hit his free agency. Well, that happened this week. He signed on for an extra four years. There's another Queenslander, uh, another ba Queensland-based key defender who's due to become a free agent next year. That's Harris Andrews, already in discussions on an extension. So Harris Andrews, the gun, Brisbane backman and co-captain, is in talks on a new deal. That's edging closer, so keep an eye out for that one. Very good. What about at Essendon? Because both Todd Goldstein and Jake Stringer, their future remains up in the air a little bit. Yeah, and Jake Stringer, as we've spoken about on this show multiple times, doesn't have the door being banged down as yet. He's a contract to play, though, so I still think that by the end of the trade period, if you're a club that, you, that had some interest in Jake String, you're thinking, would he be right for us? You're probably not putting up your hand at the moment yeah. because you can see that he's on the trade table. So why would you at this point? You're probably also chasing some other options too, so he might be a plan B uh, to some of these. So I think there's still going to be clubs who consider him. Uh, Craig McRae has had, had interest in the pies, whether that's enough to get anything across the line late in the trade period. Probably uh, at this point not looking as likely, but he could go back to Western. That's a real possibility, even though he has uh, indicated he's played his last game for them. Todd Goldstein, keen yeah. to go on next year. I expect that to, to happen and play out. He's one of only four bombers without deals for next year, alongside Will Setterfield, Sam Wiedemann and Jaden Davey. Still think uh, Setterfield and Wiedemann, the indications are pretty optimistic on them. Yeah. Davey, a little bit of uncertainty over. Moreover, just because of how good this year's draft is, and we'll get to that mm -hmm. in a sec, a lot of cl clubs are going to be delisting players who you look at it and go, how are they not on a list? Yeah, yeah. But this is because clubs want to have extra picks in this year's draft because of the quality and depth, and they're backing in pick 45 or mm. pick 52 rather than some of the known quantities that are already on list. So I think we're going to have to see some surprises in terms of delistings. Yeah, definitely getting that sense from around the competition. Dustin Martin, will he go, won't he, Kel? He will. Yeah, I think this is looking very likely now. Uh, given Martin has come to the Suns, given it's going to be on the Suns' terms financially and also how they want to play him, uh, it's not going to be a, a big, heavy financial deal. He can go up there with uh, probably a little less pressure in terms of what the expectation is for him. Uh, I don't think there's as many disadvantages for, for Dustin to, to for, for Gold Coast to grab him. Yeah. My personal opinion is he should have you know, stayed retired, but I don't think there's there's a whole lot to lose from a Gold Coast ghost point of view no, no, from no. this one. Agreed. What about uh, his premiership team out of Richmond, Shea Bolton? Well, Fremantle's still the strong favourite here. Yeah. So they have the means to get a deal done. Bolton knows that. Uh, the Dockers have had longer interest throughout this year, more discussions throughout the year. He hasn't specifically nominated a no. club in the West, but I was obviously home, keen to get home to, to WA uh, and keeping an eye on what happens with Andrew McQuilter, his former assistant yeah. at the Tigers, but uh, I have the Dockers uh, strongly ahead in this one. Certainly. What about Jack McRae? You mentioned earlier this week, you report on afl.com.au that he's requested to move now to St Kilda. Yeah. And, and Rory but, Atkins is another one at Gold Coast. Well, a couple well. of mature-aged contracted midfielders mm. uh, who are experienced. Uh, Jack McRae uh, wants to get to the Saints. Three years to go on his deal at the Western Bulldogs but wants to get there. That, that'll be an interesting one in terms of what sort of pick um, is hotly debated there. Yeah. The Saints have been pretty draft-focused throughout this whole period, so they'll want to retain their early selections, no doubt about that. And 
also um, the dogs are wanting to get something back because he did play 19 games, albeit a few as a sub this year. Rory Atkins contracted for next year, but uh, looking for opportunities elsewhere, having been you know really consistent at VFL level too. So just wait and see if anyone takes a, a, a look at him, given he's already been at two clubs now as yeah. well. Well, Cal, on the Google Pixel 9, you can restyle your photos with the Magic Editor Reimagine feature. And today, your latest Phantom Form Guide is out on afl.com.au. So I want to know, how have you reimagined the draft order this time around? Well, can we have a look at the top 10? Because there's a few changes that have come through. And the big mover is Alex Taru. The Flying Viking has flown up the ranks. Top 10. He was number 20 last month. He's number 10 now. So uh, he's going to be a ride around that market for the draft. Lee Ashcroft, number one, holds that spot. Harvey Langford shifted up a couple to number two. A pretty similar top group. Uh, Sam Wall, who's coming in shortly uh, at number six. Look, it's a, it's a midfield heavy draft. There's not much separating that that top end, I don't think. They're all just a little bit different. Here's 11 to 20. Again, a, a few little shifts. Uh, Isaac Kako obviously has kicked so many goals this year. He's in 14th place. Toby Travaglia moved up a couple there. I think his performances and consistency and competitiveness yeah. really have him right in the frame for a top 10 pick. And geez, Joe Berry and Xavier Lindsay would be a lot higher in a lot of other drafts. So would Joe, Joe Shanahan, who kicked well in the VFL. There's the, the 21 to 30. The new name in there is Ollie Hannaford. He's kicked 20 awesome goals. Recently. Yeah, kicked 20 goals in the last eight games for the Greater Western Victoria Rebels, who are through to their um, grand yeah. final this weekend in the Coates Talent League. So he breaks into there. I think some clubs have tried to keep him under wraps, but it, th that is all over now. He is yeah. absolutely um, prime time, and he's looking dangerous as a small forward. And we know timing can be everything. So if you're a small forward at the moment, after what the Hawks did in the AFL, yeah. I think it's uh, you're in a good position. And Jesse Detoli, for that reason as well, moved up a couple of spots. So that's the Phantom Form Guide. Read in a little bit more depth on afl.com.au. Go and check that out. All right, we're pleased to be joined by our next guest. It is one of the best in this year's draft crop, Sam Lawler. Hi, this is Jez Cameron, and you're watching Gettable with Cal and Riley. Jez Cameron, something different. <laughs> all right, we are wrapped to be joined by our next guest, a man who has dominated all year for both the Rebels and Vic Country. It is Sam Lawler. Sam, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in, Sam. I know it's a busy period for you. Let's get it out of the way first up, though, because there's Layla. We've been saying Lawler. <laughs> Do you want to just put it on the record now before you get into an AFL system? How commentators should be pronouncing you know? Yeah, no, it's Lawler. So we've been Lawler. right all You've year. been right, yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, <laughs> appreciate you coming in because, uh, as, you, as you said, there's lots happening at the moment. And you watched from the sidelines over the weekend, unfortunately, but Greater Western Victoria Rebels are into the grand final this weekend. Must be exciting around the club. So exciting. It's been 27 years since the last grand final, so Adam Goods was playing back then. So it's been a while, but no, we um, had an unreal win on the weekend and the last couple of weeks, actually, so... Very happy for the boys. Confidence going in this week against the Sandrian Dragons? I reckon we match up pretty well against them. We're a pretty high-pressure side and pretty tough, so I reckon we'll do all right. So, obviously, um, unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, you suffered a hamstring strain that ruled you out at the end of the season. How's that tracking along, and, and what's the sort of rehab for you over the next little bit? Yeah, um, did my hammy in Tassie and um, didn't feel too bad and got the scan results back, and it was pretty bad. So, missing a, a bit of time. But, um, yeah, rehab is... Um, just mainly off leg conditioning, can't do too much at the moment, building strength, but um, no, I'm looking forward to getting back. And you sit out the combine as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it won't be in the combine, so. How have you been staying involved with the Rebels? Obviously, it's been a great finals campaign over the last couple of weeks. How have you sort of been trying to stay involved with the club? Uh, yeah, I've just been at, been at every training, um, getting around the boys and working out on the bench, and I think, um, did a bit of coaching with the mids last week, so I think I'm in the coach's box this week, so that should be exciting. How <laughs> are you going there? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Don't want to have the headset on, I might be a bit loud. <laughs> are you a nervous watcher? Uh, yeah, definitely. I couldn't sit still the last two weeks, actually, actually the last three weeks were all close games, so Especially yeah. Sunday went down to the wide, didn't it? Oh, it, was yeah. a, it was a real ripping game. How have you, have found, have you found your draft year? I mean, obviously it's a big year for, for someone in your shoes. How have you sort of dealt with that experience? Uh, it's been a bit different for me. I missed a fair few, fair few games throughout the year, but um, it's gone pretty quick, I think. Um, I've just decided at the start of the year I just wanted to enjoy my enjoy my footy and not to get too caught up in everything. So, um, no, nah, it's been a good year in the end, and, um, yeah, it's gone pretty quick. Been a few little interruptions across the year. How's that sort of built the resilience as well throughout this season in terms of learning off the field about how to adjust and play as an AFL prospect? Yeah, yeah, definitely, um, definitely helped me, I think. Uh, the professionalism that comes with being an AFL player. Um, you've got to be in good stead. So I think being injured throughout the years really taught me um, to do the work off the field when I'm injured. And um, yeah, 
We love the way you play, mate. And I think everyone who watches you likes that as well. The aggressiveness, the physicality, the power. What are the, some of the traits that you feel you can bring to an AFL club? Yeah, like you said, I think power, power and strength are uh, probably my best two traits. And I think I have a good ability to bring my teammates into the game and have a real impact when I've got the ball. We saw you come in and make a, a pretty big impact for Vic Country halfway through the year at the, at the National Championships. How did you find that sort of step up in quality? Uh, yeah, it was a pretty pretty challenging start the first game over in WA. I was pretty underdone, but um, as I built into it more and grew some confidence, I think uh, I had a pretty good impact on the team and on and off the field. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a really good experience. Seeing some of your highlights here, you, you did a lot of your work forward of centre in the champs as well as that. Talk to us about that and playing forward because obviously you've done some great things through the midfield, but you've got that ability to go forward. Do you enjoy that aspect of the game? Yeah, definitely. Love going forward, preferably when it's deep. But, <laughs> no, I love it. Um, midfield, obviously, in my prime position. But, um, yeah, building some forward craft was really good, and I hope it holds me good stead. What have clubs told you about that in terms of how they see you positionally heading into um, the next phase? I think talking to clubs, they obviously see me mainly as a midfielder, but I think an upside that I do have is that I can go forward. So, yeah, mainly a midfielder. Who are the midfielders and, and powerful uh, impact players at AFL level you, you keep a look at and think, OK, they've done this, this and this. How do I sort of replicate those things? Um, yeah, well, I follow Collingwood and Jordan Ngoi is obviously um, a strong, powerful player and um, a big time player as well. So I followed him a lot. And um, obviously, yeah, Dusty Martin as well is a um, powerful player, mid, and they both can go forward. So. Now, the part that we also like about your, your footy is your tackling. Uh, you aggressively hunt the player. Yeah. <laughs> Where's this part of, uh, sort of grown from and developed uh, in your game? <laughs> Look at that one. <laughs> um, I think I've always been a pretty good tackler. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just... <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy it though? Yeah, no, nah, definitely. Love laying a big tackle. It's always good fun. So I've always been pretty good at it, yeah. There's been a couple of victims here across. Look at this one. Bang. Oh, no. No, you're not, you're not, <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Uh, now, we know your background as well because you come into this year and, and every year basically of your footy journey having played cricket all summer. Tell us about your cricket um, journey too and how you, did you have to make the decision? How did that weigh up? Yeah, well cricket, um, it's probably been the biggest part of my life in sporting, um, probably until halfway through last year footy I reckon. So I haven't have done much of a pre-season because I've been more focused on cricket. And um, yeah, I played um, some Vic Country down in Tassie, uh, had a carnival there and um, played at Northcote in the Premier Cricket, so um, now at school, so um, it's been so good. I don't know, love cricket. So. Let's have a look at some of the highlights here because uh, they did come through this week. This is a couple of your shots. This is playing in the championships in yep. the country. That's not a bad one. I think this is a big off drive. It goes for six, and we see the pose <laughs> afterwards as well. She's Pretty happy with that one. Pose. <laughs> this one's just pretty good on the onside, Sam. And this one's coming up as well. Let's just have a listen to the sound here. Yep. <laughs> now, let's... Uh, I just, <laughs> Look at the keeper. Look at the keeper as well. Keeper's just resigned. The, the keeper's reaction here. Now, rumour has it, Sam, that this ball hasn't actually touched down yet to the point where... Hang on. Hang on. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That ball has just landed. You'll never believe it. <laughs> How far did that one go? Oh, um... <laughs> The boys at school measured, they reckon it was over 110 metres, so it was pretty, pretty big, probably my biggest, yeah. High school? 111. 111. Yeah. Who was that against? Uh, it was Fitzroy Doncaster, actually, in oh, wow. Premier Cricket. Yeah. How many balls? 65. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fair strike, crew the big bash after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, the clubs at the top of the pool, we rank you pretty early in today's form go at number six. Obviously, those clubs are all um, jostling for, for spots. So have you had much contact with Richmond and, and West Coast and Melbourne, these clubs with, with early selections? Yeah, I've met with all those clubs and um, they're starting to double up. So they've come to school or um, had an online meeting, but they're coming home in the holidays. So... Um, yeah, it's interesting to see how it goes, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, you got any in inclination yet on, on who likes you a lot? Nah, I don't really. No, to be honest, I don't know too much. I'll just meet with the clubs and see what they see. So, one of the best things about draft night is who presents your jumper. Mm. Who would you choose to present your jumper? And I'm putting you on the spot here, uh, Collingwood fan. So maybe it has, Collingwood doesn't have a pick early enough probably at the moment. <laughs> but if you could pick anyone to present your jumper in your footy, you know, life, who would it be? I reckon it'd have to be Dusty Martin. Yeah, that'd, that's be, that'd pretty, be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. Who, who'd you be? I'd be Matty Lloyd for sure. Cooter. Cooter? Cooter. I, I, was a, I was jealous of a larger artist a couple of years ago when Lloyd oh, he got Lloyd, didn't yeah. he? That was pretty nice. That would have been a good one. Is it, is it something that motivates you to go as high as possible in this year's draft? Are you, are you motivated by that? Yeah, definitely. I think everyone wants to be number one or end up at a club they want to. So 
Um, obviously, I'm pretty motivated to get as high as I can, and it's just frustrating a little that I can't do anything else on the field at this season. So, um, yeah, but um, I think, yeah, number one or as high as I can and would be the best. No, you put your best foot forward, so I really appreciate you coming in. Thank For you. that, you are now officially gettable. Here's Beauty. your T-shirt. You want to chuck that up <laughs> to the camera here? There we go. Thanks, Sweet. heaps, and uh, good luck to the Rebels this weekend and, and beyond that for you as well. Thank Thanks, you very Sam. much. Thank you very much. Cheers, Sam. Plenty more still to come on Gettable. Let's bring in Dave Trotter from Hemisphere Management Group. All right, welcome back to Gettable, brought to you by Google Pixel. We are wrapped to be joined by our next guest. It is Dave Trotter from Hemisphere Management Group. Dave, thanks for coming back on Gettable. Thanks, boys. Good to see you. Pressure's on because that was a pretty impressive <laughs> interview from Sam. I just said I nearly walked out after how impressive he was. He's <laughs> put the pressure right on me. Yeah. How, how are you viewing this top end? Because as a group, you have a few of these guys, Finno Sullivan, uh, Harvey Langford, Sam, all in that top 10 mix, as well as a couple others that we'll talk about. But it's an interesting draft. Yeah, and for us, throw Levi in there as well, who's obviously yep. a bit different, tied to Brisbane. But uh, it's so even. I just said to you before, mate, how are you going to pick your phantom guide? I don't know. Um, I've never seen a year like it in the time I've been doing it where you know, there's genuinely five or six guides that could go one and that spread of where players go from anywhere from three to 12 and then again that next group, it's, yeah, it's pretty exciting. It was good to see Finn playing some good footy on the weekend too as well because he's had some frustrations this year. Yeah, he's very frustrated <laughs> boss, at the year he's had, but I think he showed everyone on the weekend. Um, and you see from his highlights, I think the difference with him is he doesn't need 30, 35 touches. Yeah. Um, he sort of has, you know, if he has his 18 or 20, he has a fair impact on games and hits a scoreboard pretty regularly. So um, it's good to see him play some good footy the last month. It was a good day for your boys because John T. Fall played very well as well, kicking five goals. He's really come on well back half of the year, hasn't he? Yeah, he was. Um, he's pretty motivated, John T, to get the <laughs> win. He, uh, I think when everyone watches him, like he can kick and he can mark and he can do all those things, but his competitiveness just sets him apart. He just yeah. willed himself on that game on the weekend and... Um, I think he thinks he's got one more in him and hoping he can get uh, the Rebels over the line on the weekend. Might Paddy, kick five again, mind you. He, he might well. I mean, he's, he's, he's in some form and he's got some real presence for the week before as well. Uh, Jack and Matt Whitlock, we love twins. Uh, and, and what are those two like as twins? Uh, yeah, they're super tight, um, Jack and Matt. I remember when I first um, got them on board and I said, boys, we'll do things separately. And But they just said, mate, let's just meet together. They, uh, and clubs are, clubs are asking me every time how to interview them. So... Um, they're doing a lot of stuff together and then they'll have little separate chats, but um, they get on really well. They're obviously super tight. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's an interesting year where they could, I think clubs would have them split who might be earlier. So I think they're going to be pretty close in their draft range as well. And just last line, one of your boys, Harvey Langford, uh, Cal had him at number two today. His year's been fantastic. He's done all that he could have. Tell us about him and, and what he's been able to produce. Yeah, he just works so hard, Harvey. Like I um, spoke to a couple of clubs the other day and we we're trying to think of a you know, a game where he only played an average game. I think if you look across yeah. his performances for the whole year, he just plays well every single week and um, hits the scoreboard. You know, he's that big body midfielder, but he just gets involved in so many links um, in the chains that he's just involved in so much throughout a game. All right, Trotz, that's the draft done. You've got some players who are on the move. One of them is Isaac Cumming. Is it Port Adelaide or Adelaide? Uh, he doesn't know, so <laughs> I'm not going to be able to tell you, mate. No, he... He's sort of had initial chats with both the clubs. And look, this is a really hard decision for Isaac. He loves being at GWS. He loves the club. This is, um, he's had some injury troubles this year and sort of a little bit over his career. So um, he and his partner Mia just got engaged in the last few weeks. So um, all his family's back in Adelaide, Mia's family's back there. And look, with the Giants, they've been great, but they've got a pretty talented list that they have to look at players they've got to pay coming through and what years they put on contracts and things. So we had really honest chats right throughout the year with Jason in the end. Um, it just came down to some security and some family stuff for Isaac that he'll now work through, which you know, which club that is, which he doesn't know. He'll do that in the next couple of weeks. I was going to say, what's the timeline on that process? Yeah, I think it'll be another week or two. Yeah, I think obviously, um, you know, with Port still in, you know, they might, they're hoping they've obviously got another week and a half left that um, he'll sort of wait over the next week or two, um, let the dust settle, then catch up with both clubs again and then, yeah, make a call pretty quickly after that. Matt Kennedy at Carlton, got one year remaining on that deal, but came out of his exit interview having been told that he was free to explore his options if he wanted to. Talk to us about his situation and what you see eventuating there. Yeah, and that was a really honest chat. Like, I think a few um, clubs that I've spoken to assumed it was because of he got subbed off, you know. And he had a pretty big week, Matty. He was in hospital himself at the start of the week, sick. Then 48 hour labour for the birth of his first child, um, young Theo, and then flew up and got subbed off. So it was a lot of emotions I think came out, but it wasn't just that. We've had honest chats with Maddie and the club right throughout the year. Um, 
he sees himself as an inside mid. Um, he's really happy at Carlton and will happily stay there. And I think that's the likely scenario. But the club just had an honest chat saying, mate, if you had an opportunity where, and it'd be a club in Victoria um, with a young family um, that had a role for you and you thought that was what you wanted to do, then go for it. So Matt hasn't said, mate, I want out or anything like that. But, you know, if there was some, I'm not out there canvassing every single club around but if something came then we'd have an honest chat with the club and i think they'd be open to it sticking on with carlton for a second but harry Mackay, obviously his name got brought up momentarily in the the christian petrarca trade talks earlier last month talk to us about how he sort of dealt with that situation uh yeah that was fun <laughs> um oh look we shut that down as quick as we could um I hadn't had a call from Carlton, hadn't had a call from Melbourne. Harry didn't know anything about it. So I get how the landscape works that these things get thrown up. Um, and then that turns into another story and another story. But um, Harry rang straight away and said, you know, he wanted to check there was nothing to it, first of all. <laughs> um, Nick Austin reassured me nothing from them. Um, so Harry said he's got no interest. He loved it at Carlton. He wouldn't have signed a seven-year deal if he didn't. So, yeah, there was nothing to it. Elliot Himmelberg had some interest in going to the Giants last year. Is it now the Suns for him? I think that's the likely outcome, yeah. Obviously, GWS um, wanted him last year, and credit to Adelaide, and that's where I think, you know, I know there's a lot of talk around player power and all that now, and when a club, when a player's contract, a club can say no. I think that's the reality, and we saw that last year, and that was fine. Elliot went back in there this year and played some good footy early before his body let him down a bit, but, um, yeah, I think we've had some good chats with Gold Coast. They've obviously got... You know, Ben King is their pillar up forward and then a couple of younger forwards and some guys at the end of their career. So, um, yeah, it's looking positive at the moment. Just a few things to tick off. Jacob Constanti, top 20 pick back in his day, but still without a deal at Sydney. What's the latest there? Yeah, obviously with, you know, again, they hope they've got a week and a half left. Um, we'll sit down with the club after the season. Um, he doesn't know his future at the moment. So he might still have a spot at Sydney. Um, if not, look, I think he's, it's just, Sydney have got a very strong list and they yeah. don't have a lot of um, list spots um, in terms of they want to bring a few players in through the draft and then don't have many guys out of contract. So, uh, look, I think if it wasn't Sydney, he's got a couple of clubs that I think really liked him in his draft years. Not many players that pick 20. He's a great kid. He's super competitive. He actually gets told to take it easy a bit at training. So if you've got those traits, um, I'd hope that if it wasn't at the Swans, which he hopes it is, but if it's not, I'd hope he ends up somewhere. We've got a couple of other deals you've done recently and Dougal Howard sign on at the Saints and also Paddy Voss at, at Fremantle too. Just on another realm though, uh, Kane Farrell obviously came pretty close <laughs> to being available yeah. for the prelim. Have you spoken to him this week around how touch and go it was? Yeah, did I spoke to him last night. He said he got through reasonably well. Um, I think it's too risky for this week, um, which is fair enough. He, uh, he'll be a very, very nervous watcher um, <laughs> on the weekend because I think if, uh, if they get through, he's very confident that he'll, he'll be putting his hand up to play in the grand final. So, yeah. Trots, you've already got your T-shirt. I do. I yes. think you wear it under, under Pride there. Pride of place, yeah. So <laughs> this one's for you. That mug's for you. You can take that back to uh, back to home. And also, we just need you to sign this okay. one as well to put on the, the Gettables board. So I appreciate all your support, as always, and uh, and for you and Sam coming in today. No We've worries. got plenty more still to come on Gettable over the coming weeks. Have a look at this. So next week, we are live at the Footy Festival outside the MCG. That's Wednesday afternoon. More details to come there. Keep up with our Instagram page at Gettable. We'll put all the details there. Gettable Trade Desk is live every weekday from the Tuesday after the grand final. We're wrapped to be doing that. And then Gettable's Draft Night Countdown is back ahead of the November's National Draft. Yeah, next week. Can't wait for that. So we'll have our normal show on Wednesday. Wednesday morning we'll be up and live with all the latest mm -hmm. news. And also that afternoon we'll have a, a live show down at uh, the Footy Festival where we actually have ordered some T-shirts. Okay. So some T-shirts are for the first time up for grabs for <laughs> uh, our loyal and avid fan base. Well, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll be like a Taylor Swift concert out there. <laughs> 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 uh, Trust, thanks for getting <laughs> here. <laughs> Thank you, Trust. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you to you for watching. Thank you to Google Pixel for their continued support. We'll see you next Next week on Get It. <laughs> Want to get all the latest footy news in one hit? From injuries to breaking news, the latest from the coaches, the Footy Feed team has you covered. Watch it now on afl.com.au and the AFL Live app or wherever you get your podcasts.